Hello, welcome back to another video recap of all of the models over at the site. My name is James McCool. I'm going to be going through this recap of all of the models over on paydirt.ghost.io. Um, they were all the active ones from yesterday. We had both NBA and NHL yesterday. Today we have NBA, NHL, and League of Legends, I believe. So it's going to be a longer recap video tomorrow, but today... Uh, it was just a four-game slate for NBA yesterday uh, and a 10-game slate for NHL. We're actually going to be starting with NHL today, uh, going through the stacks uh, that we had. I know that we had a pretty successful night last night, plenty of screenshots and um, people being happy about the sheets last night. We were mostly on the New York Rangers, the Montreal Canadiens, the... Uh, Vancouver Canucks and the Ottawa Senators. Um, Ottawa put up five goals. The Rangers put up five goals. Montreal put up two, and the Canucks put up two as well. Um, we we're on Toronto as well. They were a top ten stack on the night. They ended up putting up five uh, goals as well. So pretty good. Uh, not bad at all. I have had a couple questions about how to stack and, and do things like that in NHL. And um, th those questions have been mostly answered through the Discord. I think a lot of people are kind of catching on to a sport that I certainly am new at and that I'm, I've been kind of exploring through with the models. But stacking and not worrying too much about goalies has worked out pretty well. Um, I'm going to put up a link in this video to see the actual full results of the models from now on, so you'll be able to go through and parse through the actual results of the models. But overall, the NHL model worked out pretty well. We were on um, a couple of different teams that scored five goals each. For basketball, for the four-game slate, um, we'll go over the defense efficiency matchups first. The defense efficiency matchup sheets were mostly okay, uh, but we don't really use them all that much when it comes to such a short slate. Um, I, I think that it is important to say, oh, these guys are in good spots and you should keep that you know, in mind, but a four-game slate is so contextual. And when, you know, I, I wrote up in the NBA sheet for the Discord last night and for the site that... I thought that it was a lot more important to build lineups that were competitive rather than build lineups that rated well. And that is kind of an oxymoron to a lot of people, I think. But it it's not so much about saying, oh, this player is projected to do well or this player is in a good matchup. You have to think about what happens in those matchups and think about the best way to not only leverage the field, but unlock your ceiling. So uh, that, that little write-up yesterday for NBA, I thought gave a pretty good example of what you should be doing on these shorter slates and how you should be attacking them, not only in NBA, but also in, in other sports. I think there's things to take away from that. So we'll go over the DM, DEM sheets here really quick and then move on to the range of outcomes and uh, probably make this pretty short video since it was such a short NBA slate. Uh, Chris Paul for point guard. He had 17 points, 4 rebounds, 7 assists, 2 steals, and 0 blocks. Uh, it was an okay performance, put up 36 fantasy points. He was pretty expensive, so not bad, not great. Uh, OKC was kind of a letdown yesterday. I know that a couple people in Discord were pretty heavy on them, so that's a bit of a bummer, but okay, not terrible. Avery Bradley for shooting guard, 12 points, 1 rebound, 2 assists, 1 steal, and 0 blocks. I hate Avery Bradley. I don't like playing him. I think that uh, he's just not a good fantasy asset, like, ever. But he was really cheap, and he put up 19 fantasy points, so that ended up working out pretty well. Uh, Danilo Gallinari ended up putting up 24 points, 6 rebounds, and 1 steal, which is, like, you can pretty much just kind of pencil in Danilo Gallinari for 35 fantasy points every single night. Um... I would I would be drastically surprised if he were to ever surpass like forty five fantasy points. The dude has no ceiling whatsoever. Moving on to power forward, Demonis Sabonis put up twenty points, eleven rebounds, four assists, one steal, and zero blocks. Was a top five or six fantasy scorer last night. Um, was somebody that you needed in GPPs, and uh, he rated really well. Had the best possible matchup for power forwards. Of course, we know that going up against Carmelo Anthony is going to be a good good spot for anybody. 
And then finally, uh, Miles Turner ended up putting up 14 points, 10 rebounds, and two blocks. Had a good game, another uh, good spot against Portland. People think of Son Whiteside as a good center, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he's a good defensive center. He gets a lot of blocks, but um, going for blocks is inherently aggressive and volatile, and it's going to leave the rim open a lot of the time as well. So uh, don't, ever be don't ever be afraid to attack um, Son Whiteside with opposing centers. He gets a lot of rebounds, but he, he lets up a lot of points, and there's a lot of rebounds to go around. So DM sheets were okay, not incredible. Um, most of the players here did good to great. Avery Bradley, Demonis Bonus, and Miles Turner all did very well for what the slate was. Um, Danilo Gallinari and Chris Paul both were good, but not incredible. Go on to the range of outcomes now. Uh, we'll go down the top 20 list as usual. In the top 20, we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 great performances and 3 good performances. So 14 out of the 20 top spots uh, ended up really well, but we did have 3 LOL performances, which I will... Uh, go over here in a second. So we'll start at the top. Rohan Rondo ended up putting up 29 fantasy points. It's fantastic. He was like a million percent owned, though, so he didn't gain anything on the field. I'm not taking a victory lap on that one. Uh, Al Horford, 42.75 fantasy points. Again, a million percent owned, uh, not taking victory lap, but glad that he was, you know, a top five play on the slate. Uh, Danny Green <laughs> put up 1.5 fantasy points, which is an LOL bad performance. That is just atrocious. Um, definitely overprojected the minutes for him. Thought that he would get a little more run. He did not. Hassan Whiteside put up 49 fantasy points. He was um, cheaper than he has been yesterday. He uh, he was only 8,800, I think, on DraftKings. So 50 fantasy points is definitely going to be in play. He was a top, I think, like three play on the slate last night. Uh, Miles Turner, 33 fantasy points. Great performance. Fantastic. Um, he was only 5,200. That is good for 6x, nearly 7x. Uh, Demona Sabonis, 42.25 fantasy points. He was pretty expensive, 9K, but on a slate where there was not a lot of really high scoring, expensive players, he played just fine. Like that, that performance is going to work out pretty well. Danilo Gallinari, 35.5. Cool. Same score that he always gets. Um, I had him projected for 34.53. I need to go through really quick and actually recount all of the projections that I had. So I had Rahan Rondo projected for 30. He scored 29. I had Al Horford projected for 32. He scored 42. I had Danny Green projected for 24. He scored 1. I had Hassan Whiteside projected for 48. He scored 49. I had Miles Turner projected for 30. He scored 33. Um, I had Demonis Bonus projected for 48. He scored 42. And Gallinari projected for 34. And he scored 35. Um, Anthony Davis scored 39. I had him projected for 52. He was the biggest letdown on the slate and topic of conversation this morning in the Discord. Uh, he was not a good fade last night, and I tried to explain that the best that I could. I understand the reasons why you would fade him, but it just wasn't necessary last night. Uh, Gary Trent Jr. had him projected for 24. He ended up putting up 30.25. Fantastic performance from him. Um, he stepped up quite a bit in that matchup with no uh, Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum being tired. Uh, Chris Paul had him projected for 41. He put up 36. Not bad. Already talked about him in the DEM sheets. Contavious Caldwell Pope had him projected for 19, or had him projected for 21. He ended up putting up 19. Um, not bad. That's totally fine. That'll play. Uh, he was really cheap. Draymond Green got ejected because he's a dick. Uh, so I had him projected for 30. He put up, I don't know. I didn't even look because I was mad about it because I had him everywhere. Um, Avery Bradley, he put up 19. I had him projected for 20. So happy about that. Um, he did great for 3,300. Andrew Wiggins had him projected for 36. He ended up getting late scratch for back spasms, which is annoying. Uh, and again, I had a lot of him. I, I ended up stacking that Lakers and Golden State game. And so Draymond Green and, and Andrew Wiggins falling apart there, just tilting. Uh, Buddy Heald, I had him projected for 30. He ended up putting up 25.75. Uh, it's a pretty mad performance. I didn't think that it was great. Um, came up short of 5x. He he wasn't an incredible play last night anyway, but um on a short slate, you know, he was okay. 
Uh, CJ McCollum had him projected for 42. He ended up putting up 43. So, have, well, I had him projected for 42.7, so 43, and he put up 43. So pretty damn good. Corey Joseph, I had him projected for 18. He ended up putting up 30. He had a fantastic performance. Uh, that's 10x, I think. Um, yeah, pretty close. Malcolm Brogdon had him projected for 38 point f- or I had him projected for 36. He ended up putting up 38.5. Uh, that's a really good performance from him. Great performance, over 5x. On a slate like last night, that's all you needed. Uh, Tobias Harris, I had him projected for 36.03. He ended up putting up 58.25. Uh, he crushed the slate. He was 88% owned. Um, again, no victory laps, so he did very well there. And then Julius Randle had him projected for 37. He ended up putting up 52. Uh, in my write-up yesterday, I said to stack the Knicks and the Phillies game. And that obviously worked out really, really well if you were able to go Julius Randle, Tobias Harris, Al Horford, and Alfred Payton like I did. It was about the best start that you could have if you went also with Shake Milton. Um, and it didn't even matter if you uh, used the same strategy that I did, which was to stack that and the, and the uh, Golden State and Lakers game. So... Really, really good performances. Um, I think that, you know, the projections were obviously really, really good. So I'm really happy about that. I know a lot of people found a lot of su- success with the sheets last night um, outside of the dumb scratches and ejections and stuff like that. So thank you for tuning in. Um, I am going to be adding the links to see all of the files from that night and so you can like go through and look at the things and make sure that you go over and get a subscription to paydirt.ghost.io. Um, MLB season is coming up. We're less than a month away, so really excited to get everything put together for that. Thank you for tuning in, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow.